My name is Howard, but people call me Kilroy. I'm nine years old. It's 1952. I live in Daly City. I'm the fourth child out of six. Arlene is the oldest, and there's Gary. Then Bob, and me, Barbara, and Frankie. So why do they call me Kilroy? Well, the short answer is I'm not home very much, especially for a nine-year-old. So when somebody asks, where is Kilroy? The answer is usually, well, he was here, like Kilroy. And the name stuck. That's OK. I kind of like it. Kind of like I'm somebody else, the mystery kid. Kilroy was here. I know my way everywhere, and everyone knows me. The neighbors. They let me hang out at their house. They feed me. They let me play in their yard with their pets and their children, or sometimes just by myself. One family lets me hang around a lot. The dad is very quiet. The mom is very loud. They have a girl my age. In about 12 years or so, I'll marry that girl. We'll put each other through eight years of hell. <laughs> Somehow, we'll stop fighting long enough to have two sons. I always know when it's time to leave somebody's house. I do stretch it out. Sometimes they just tell me, Kilroy, we have things we've got to do, and you need to leave. It's time to go. There's always nice about it, but I always know. So I'll go out and explore. I've gone all the way up to Mount Sutro several times. I've been up to Coit Tower, too. The Legion of Honor, the zoo, the old Sutro baths. I was all the way down to the beach the other day. People don't think much about a kid wandering along the beach. I'll come to this beach a lot. In eight or nine years, I'll learn to smoke pot, score speed, and do a little heroin. In ten years, I'll watch one of my friends kill another with a twenty-two rifle. It can take all day and late into the night to walk to some of these places. Sometimes I hitch rides and lectures. But it's 1952. People are nicer. And I tell them that my family lets me go wherever I want. And it's kind of true. They do let me. Or at least they don't try to stop me. They call me Kilroy. And they wonder why I'm always gone. They think Kilroy is just one of those kids, outgoing and, and bright, but not quite sharp enough to know when he's overstayed his welcome. They wonder why I don't go home. But eventually, eventually I run out of houses to stay at and places to go. I get hungry, I get tired, and I go home. My dad yells at me and beats me pretty hard, depending on how long I was gone. I'll hold out a bit, but I cry. Then I'll, that'll get me to the table, and I'll get something to eat under the battered gaze of my mom. And then it's time to go upstairs, but not to sleep. No matter how quiet I am, Gary is there. He makes me suck his dick. I try not to cry because I don't want Gary to see me cry, but I do all the same. The salt of his cum mixes with the salt of my tears. And choking and broken, I go to bed. Gary makes me suck his dick, and he doesn't know it. But I'll never get that taste out of my mouth. I'll become a drunk and a drug addict. I'll be married and divorced four times. I'll have four sons from three different women. I'll hold over 50 jobs. I'll join the army while I'll be lucky to get a discharge under honorable conditions just to get rid of me. I'll spend a couple of years as a homeless street person, begging for spare change in the urine reeking streets of San Francisco. I'll travel from Kansas to Alaska in empty boxcars like hobos from the movies. I'll abandon my children for years at a time. I'll try recovery and fail. I won't even succeed killing myself. I'll drive away nearly all my friends and my family, except my oldest son. I'll end up on disability in my oldest sister's basement until liver disease sweeps me away in a jaundiced flood. My son will look me in the eye and he'll tell me, Kilroy, it's time to go. And I'll stretch it out. But eventually, eventually I have to go. They'll bury me under a tiny headstone at the VA, my one benefit from my brief stint as a soldier. And my son will look down and he'll say, Kilroy was here.